Ladies and gentlemen, from Arena, Birmingham, we are set to go with our next bout of the evening, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing, sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, and JD Sports. Your timekeeper for this bout is Jason Booth, and at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring will be from Dudley, Mr. Sean Messer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears black and red. He weighed in at 10 stone, two pounds. His professional record, 10 victories against seven defeats. He has one win coming by way of knockout. De la Libertad, Chontales, Nicaragua. Damas y caballeros, presentamos Oscar El Maromero Amador. Amador. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears black and white. He also scaled at a trim and ready 10 stone, two pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 16 fights, 16 victories, 10 big wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Forest Hall, Newcastle, introducing the popular and exciting British lightweight champion, the Sandman, Louis Ritson. Ritson. Keep the fight clean, when I say break, stop punching and step back. Obey me at all times and protect yourself at all times. Is that understood? Touch gloves. Good luck. Lewis Ritson, as we know, on October the 13th in Newcastle, will be boxing for the European title, the vacant European title, but needs some rounds. That's the idea. For the first round. So they're scheduled for eight, Ritson in the black and white, and Amador of Chontales in Nicaragua in the black and red. And Ritson has been one of the standout stories of British boxing over the last year, winning that title against Robbie Barrett, then defending three times to win it outright in just four rounds. And this could be another quick one here. I think Amador has come to have a go. And that's not a good plan. We've seen other people do that. We saw Joe Murray try it. We saw Scott Cardle try it. It didn't end well. Paul Highland was hurt early too. And then he chose to trade. But down he went within a round. As I said, Matt, the idea is that we'll get some rounds in here tonight, Ritson. I'm not convinced he's going to get too many. Needs to be careful. The last thing he wants here is some kind of head clash, anything like that, and the cut. That would be a catastrophe for him, frankly. Yeah, without a doubt, but I... Uh, you know, I'm just thinking here, watching him, he's absolutely huge for a lightweight. And he's so strong, and a big punch. I mean, we've seen him... We've seen he's the breakout fighter for me in British boxing. He's just come from the win against Robbie Barrett to winning the Lonsdale belt outright. And, and good opponents, you know, and even a, being his mandatory in, in Highland, he's really just gone from strength to strength. And in under four rounds to do it, he's just, without a doubt, the breakout fighter of the year. Referee just warning Amador again about low blows. It's the second time that Sean Messer's had a word with him. So if he does it again, then a point may go. That looked a bit low from Ritson, though, to be honest. The left hand, I think the referee was on the blind side, didn't quite see it. Is there any chance here, you put yourself in Ritson's shoes, is there any chance here that he'll think, you know what, I might just not take it easy, but see if I can get two or three rounds out of this? Or does he just want to get this over as fast as he can? No, I think he's going to take his time. And to be honest, with the with the fights with Joe Murray and, and uh, Scott Cardle, I thought he came out and took his time. It's just that he landed a big shot, hurt them early, and, you know, once he hurt them, dug with a bone, closed the show, put his foot to the floor and got them out of there. But uh, I didn't think he came out looking, forcing, loading up. He went about the business, you know, breaking them down methodically, and the shot just came. Big puncher, massive for the weight. Physically very strong. We'll tell you now. Watch your head in his face, okay? You well, being warned about the head there by referee Sean Messer. Ritz and gestured to the referee that he wasn't happy with the Nicaraguan's use of the head. It's for the referee to decide. He shouldn't be influenced by the home fighter. 
That's it's a bit like there might have been an element of that there. That's a real ramrod job from Ritz, a jab from Ritz, and he's not. Hey! That's not a, 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 a range finder or a point scorer. He's doing damage with that jab. He's breaking Amador up with it. There it is again. This is a real solid looking jab. He's trying to time Amador on the way in there with the right uppercut. Amador just getting hold of his left arm. He's trying everything he can here. Get him up, just bash him up a bit. Yeah, yeah Jack, bash him up a bit. Just, but keep. If it, when he comes in, drop yourself down. You know, so just watch. He just he, he's, he's thrown something. He's fallen in with his yeah. head. Just watch because we don't want no injuries. So just bash him up with that jab. Bash yeah. him up and a long, longer one twos. Just right. Just step, keep jab, jab, and then step back when he goes to rush in. Thing there. And when you're inside, double the, shoot, oh, oh, yeah. double the left over. It'll only last another round or two, yeah. you know. That's a Ritson corner. Good advice there. coming in there. Just being told Boys. Ritson to bash him up Ten with a jab, seconds. but don't get in too close and risk any kind of head clash. No, good left hook seconds there. Out, round two. Ritson's trainer is Dad Davey. Doesn't feel that this is going to go beyond another couple. That's what he was saying to him in the corner. In between rounds, there's that jab again, real ramrod jab. And this is a keep busy fight. We mentioned that European title fight, the vacant European title after Edith Tatley gave it up. He's in with Francesco Patera Ritson, who some of you will recognize. He boxed Sean Dodd not that long ago, and Dodd won by split decision over 10 rounds and he's a tricky technical kind of fighter so it will definitely be a different fight to some of the ones he's had recently we mentioned that murray joe murray and scott carlo came flying out of ritz and trying to make a dent in him early but won't do that i'll be amazed if he does that so there'll be a different kind of battle that they'll need to prepare for yep he's breaking amador up here good right uppercuts I like the way he manhandles his opponents on the inside too, he uses his left forearm, creates a bit of room, drives the right up through the middle. This is the first fight outside Nicaragua for Amador. Best result of his career, you'd say he was in his last fight, he won by split decision against Lester Medrano. But he's got no notable names on his record, but he's hanging in there at the minute. Trying to make it messy on the inside, Amador, if he can. Just looking to tie Ritson up again, has got a grip of that left arm. I just wonder if Ritson's falling between two stools a little bit here. He's not been quite as positive as we've seen him. He's aware, of course, of the potential dangers of a head clash or something like that, but he can't really have that in his mind. He doesn't want to go through unnecessary kind of unprofitable rounds here. No, but it'd be in the back of his mind. He won't want to clash heads. He won't want to pick up a court or injure his hand. You know, he's got a big fight ahead of him in October. So that will be in the back of his mind, but he has got to focus on Amador. But he's winning well. He's totally in charge. He's using his jab very effectively, really driving it home. He's using his left forearm on the inside to create some room to drive the right uppercut through. Just looking a bit frustrated at times. He was trying to tee up a right hand there, and then Amador just came in and closed down the space, as he was absolutely entitled to do.
Well, there's the Amador corner. Well, taken care of by Jose Garcia and Iñaki Jano. Seconds out, round three. Good right hand there from Ritson. But Amador took it well. Caught by a left on the break also, but he was just moving backwards. But the body One, shot has put Amador down two, there. A delayed reaction, three, as you often see, has a look four, towards the corner. Five, he's grimacing. Six, seven, eight, and he's not going to make it. And he is counted out. You could see the pain on his face as he went down. He had a look at the corner and decided that he couldn't make it, that he couldn't beat the count. I was waiting till eight there to see if he was just looking to compose himself and then rise swiftly. Yeah, to be honest, Andy, I think the fight had been knocked out of him anyway. He was, you know, he'd been under the cosh from the very first bow. He'd taken some heavy shots. He'd, you know, they Richard had jabbed the head off him. There were stiff hard jabs going in. One, twos were coming down the middle. He was landing good right up across. That body shot then absolutely sickened him. And, I, you know, I think he could have got up, but I think he knew he was on a hiding to nothing and the fight had been knocked out of him. He was gesturing towards the corner there, I think, that there's maybe something wrong with his right hand if that's the case then i didn't spot exactly when that might have occurred but he seemed to be saying to jose garcia that there might be a slight problem with it it's a fighter's pride you look for things when really you've decided that it is not a good way to spend your time to hang in the ring any longer with lewis ritson so that will just keep him busy ritson it's been an amazing year for him, but there's a big grimace on his face around Amador as they're trying to pull the glove off. It's never the easiest thing in the world to do anyway. It always requires some real tugging on that glove. And I think maybe with the thumb, he's just saying to the doctor in the corner, I think that there's possibly a problem with the thumb. Well, it is there. I'm just checking that out. Lewis yeah. Ritson in the opposite corner won't care about that. I'm sure he wishes him all the best for the future, but this was always going to be a fight that he would move on from quickly and then much, much bigger things to come on October the 13th, but let's just have a look at the finish. Some earlier work actually in the round from Ritson, he kicked it off, teed it up with a, a nice right hand there. Yeah, good right hand and a body shot went in, but to be honest, you know, I think he'd had the fight knocked out of him, I think he just thought, I've had enough, you know, you don't pull out of a fight with a sore thumb, we, that, that happens nearly every fight, you know, I don't think it was... Uh, I think it was just the case he knew that he was beaten. It was a shot on the top of the head. And I just think the fight had been knocked out of him and he knew he, he'd, he'd done his job, he'd come and had a go and he didn't want to take any more. Well, I thought it was a body shot. He had his back to us. I thought a shot had landed to the body. There is one there and there was a delayed reaction. Yeah, good left hook there, solid jab as well. But in the end, he just kind of took a knee and decided to stay on it. There wasn't any single punch that really seemed to do the damage. And he's indicated that he's got a problem with the thumb, but let's not be too harsh on Oscar Amador. This was always going to be a very difficult task for him. Eight rounds is a long time, and he did have a look at the corner, and he decided that his night's work was done. And so is his. And our MC David Diamante is ready to give us the final particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Sean Messer calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, 36 seconds of round number three. Your winner by countout and still undefeated, Lewis Ritson. So another one in the books for Lewis Ritson, 17 and 0. He's already won that Lonsdale belt outright. Now he looks to become European champion on home turf in October. Fritzen has made the journey down to ringside along with promoter Eddie Hearn. We do know what's next, but it'll be interesting to get these thoughts ahead of that next big step that he'll be hoping to take in his career. And he's down ringside with Andy Scott. Lewis, congratulations. A warm-up for your vacant European title fight against Francesco Patera on October 13th. Have you come through that injury-free tonight? Yeah, injury-free and just nice to get some rounds in the bank before the Patera fight in October 30th. Are you prepared for that reception you're going to get? It was very, very loud for the British title, for the European title. Are you prepared? 
yeah, I'm prepared, you know, as the team tell us it's got to just keep a uh, level feet on the ground, and that's what we're doing, and hopefully we'll have a big night on October the 13th. We've seen uh, Francesco Patera over here before against Sean Dodd, but he's uh, been in very good company. What do you know about him, and uh, how high did you rate him? He's a durable fighter, he can do a bit of both, he can box, he can fight, so a bit of a box of tricks, really, we'll see on the night what he comes, comes with, and uh, we reckon we've got the tools to deal with him. What do you have to do particularly to beat him? Keep on his back foot, and uh, not let him hold on like the opponent was tonight, but a uh, bit new things for tonight, and we'll be ready for October the 13th. Since winning that Lonsdale belt, outright, uh, since beating Robbie Barrett, you've won it outright, but it was a total of less than 10 minutes ring time. Is lack of ring time a concern at all? No, uh, and he'll tell you I'm, I'm fit as anything, you know, I would have done 12 rounds like that easy tonight, so uh, bring on October the 13th, Eddie's a boss, he'll, he'll, he'll keep me right and uh, looking forward to it. Eddie, it could be a special night in Newcastle, couldn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a perfect performance. Move on five weeks tonight, he's going to raise the roof in Newcastle. He's built something and we've built something very, very special up there. European title. Patera's going to be a tough fight. And that was good, good practice for him in there tonight because Patera's going to be moving. He's very cute. He's clever. He's got to be patient against Patera. But a massive opportunity for him to move from British level up to European level five weeks tonight. Well done. See you October 13th.